everyone, it's Heather. Welcome back into the Paper Castle. This is a current video instead of the old ones that I keep posting from this summer, um, from all my summer hauls that you guys haven't seen yet. Um, so the 2019 season is about to begin. I'm very excited um, because, and, and I've heard it from a lot of you, but for some reason, I mean it's always usually slow, January, February, but holy moly, it has been ungodly slow since the beginning of the year. I mean, just insane. In the, it's going on my 11th year um, selling on eBay. This is the slowest it's ever been for me. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what's happening, but it's really, really frustrating. Um, I have been listing, uh, but, you know, it's just the, there's watchers everywhere, but just not buyers. So I'm ready to, like, bang my head against a wall. I just want to get out there and find some new stuff and get it up there and see if I can turn this, you know, thing around. So, um, I am going to babble for a few minutes here, so for those of you who don't like that, you know, you can, I'll put in the description, you know, when the actual haul starts, because I do have things to show you from the beginning of the year until now. I have been actually to a few rummage sales um, that, you know, were going on here and there, um, but I am going to babble for a few minutes, so can either fast forward to where the haul starts or just keep fast forwarding through the video until you, you know, get to where you see me showing things to you. Um, but let's see. The other reason it's been slow is because in January I lost a week because my mom and I went to San Diego. That was my birthday present from my husband, um, you know, back in September, but we didn't get to go until January. And then a month later, we went down to Florida like we always do to visit my husband's family. So I lost two weeks of income there. Um, not complaining at all about, you know, vacation and going to see family. It's just, it stinks when you have to close your store and you know you're not going to make any money that week. Um, you know, in Florida, it was just me, my husband, and my daughter. My son couldn't come because he got a new job. Um... He is now a mental health technician, and he is in charge of the kids, like 12 to 18. There's adults on site, too, in different um, sections of the place, but he works with the kids because that's what he loves to do. And actually today he's at a ceremony. He gets like a little sticker taken off his ID badge because he's been there for three months because I guess the majority of people don't make it to three months because it's a very high-stress job. And a lot of people can't handle the things that go on there. Because trust me, he comes home with some stories. Holy cow. Um, but I'm really proud of him. He's doing a great job. So we went to Florida. The only new things we did is we went on an airboat ride. It was, you know, okay. And went to Universal. And I got to go to, you know, Diagon Alley in Harry Potter World. And I was so happy. And my husband and my daughter looked at me like I was a nutcase. Um... And let's see what else has been going on. Oh, we got new people at the post office, which initially I was very upset about because for all the years I've been on eBay, I've gone across the highway to this little tiny hole-in-the-wall post office, which is much better than my own post office and actually much closer than my own post office. And there was this little tiny woman, probably not even five feet tall, named Donna, She's like my goddess of the postal service. And I don't think I could have gotten through the first few years of eBay without her. She helped me so much. She always had a smile on her face. And I don't know how she did everything she did because a lot of the time she was there by herself. Well, she ended up retiring at the end of the year, which made me so sad. <laughs> but she is well, well, well deserved. And she left... Her replacement there, this guy named Laurent, who was there probably the last two months that she was still working. And, oh my lord, he was so uptight and nervous all the time. I thought it would go away after like a month. No. And 
I'm used to walking in there, throwing my packages on the counter and walking away and saying, you know, I don't need a receipt. But no, not with, not with Laurent. You have to wait there until it's your turn. Even if there's, you know, a big line, you can't just put your packages on the counter. And then, you know, once you put them on the, the counter, like I would pile everything on scale. That's just what I did. That's what everybody else did, too. And he'd freak out. He's like, no, only one thing on the scale at a time. Make sure nothing else is touching the scale. I'm like, oh, my God, like, take a Xanax, dude. What is wrong with you? So, um, fortunately, though, about a week after I came back from Florida, I noticed Laurent wasn't there. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess he went on vacation or something. Well, I guess they put Laurent on permanent vacation. <laughs> he hasn't been there for a month. And they got this new guy, He's so laid back, so nice. And I just walk in, I say hello, I put the packages on the scale, and he's like, you need a receipt? I'm like, no. He's like, okay, cool, see you tomorrow. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. So, very happy about that. Um, but let me try and tell you guys real quick about San Diego. Um, my husband sent my mom and I out there because, um, I've said this before, I was born out there. We left when I was two. And I haven't been back since. And it was always on my bucket list to go back with my mom so she could show me, you know, all over the place. And the funny thing is, is that um, the apartment where we used to live is exactly the same. Hasn't changed in 50 years. So um, we flew out there in the middle of January. And um, she showed me our old apartment took lots of pictures, she showed me the park where she used to, you know, walk with me and walk walk our dog and then we went down the hill to Mission Bay, which is, you know, right down the hill from our apartment. Gorgeous place, beautiful sunset. You can kind of walk around this little bay. And a lot of people walk their dogs and stuff. We went to Old Town, which is like a little Mexican town with all these shops and um, restaurants and stuff. We loved it there. We went to La Jolla, which is absolutely gorgeous. The beach is amazing. Parts of it look like an alien planet. It's just so much different than here on the East Coast. Um, went to the San Diego Zoo, which has always been another dream of mine. Um, Balboa Park, which is this amazing park that has like, I don't know, 16 museums on site. It's crazy. Uh, I'd love if we had something like that out here. Um, the weather was gorgeous. I think it only rained one day, the second day we were there, and that was it. Other than that, it was beautiful. People dressed, it was very strange. The, <laughs> it was like probably mid-60s the whole time we were there, and people either dressed in like short sleeve shirts and shorts, or they were completely bundled up like it was the middle of you know, like our winter over here on the East Coast with coats and hats and scarves and gloves. And, like, what is happening? <laughs> it's very weird. Um, so, the other reason that I wanted to go out there, which I didn't tell my mom, but she was happy once we made it there and did this, was um, right after my mom had me, she got pregnant with my sister like very shortly afterwards like probably three four months and unfortunately my sister was born uh... two months early actually two weeks before my first birthday and back then there wasn't all the technology there is today and we lost her you know after only a few hours so um... i actually became the one who had her ashes it's a long story, I'm not going to go into it, but um, my mom like couldn't handle having them, so I had them for a few years now, and before we left, I had my husband open the box, which was this copper box all welded shut, and he opened it, and I took part of her ashes, and I put them in a, a Ziploc bag, and I brought them with me, and the one day we were in La Jolla, we were sitting on a bench, and just looking out at the ocean and I start looking through my purse and she's like what are you looking for and I go well I kind of brought somebody else here with us and she's like what and she starts like looking all around like 
looking for somebody to like walk up to us. And I pulled a Ziploc back out and I go, I brought my sister. I said, I just thought that, you know, this is the only home she ever knew and it would be appropriate if we scattered her ashes somewhere out here. I said, it's up to you where you want to put them, whether you want to split them up, whatever. So of course my mother starts bawling and which she never does, but she did. And um, so we ended up after La Jolla going back to our apartment and we looked like friggin' stalkers and put her ashes um, in the front little courtyard there. Then we went down to Mission Bay again, put some there, um, spread some at the zoo because my mom's favorite animal is the giraffe, so she wanted my sister to be with the giraffes. And I wanted part of her to be with the koalas because we don't have koalas here in our zoo and they're just so adorable. And then the last day we were there, we went to Seaport Village, which is right, look out, uh, overlooks Coronado Bay, which um, if you go over the Coronado Bay Bridge, that's where my father worked on the naval base while we were out there. So it was gorgeous there, so that's the last place we scattered her ashes. So it was just really nice. My mom was very grateful. She, you know, I think it was good closure for her. After all this time, she was glad she got to bring my sister home, kind of. So that was good. I got to see sea lions which I was like the one thing I wanted to do. My daughter's like, what do you want to do out there? I'm like, I want to see a sea lion, like in the wild, not at a zoo. She's like, you're such a dork. That's all you want to do? <laughs> like, well, that's top of my list. Well, right after I told my mom that I'd brought my sister and we're sitting on this bench, we got up and we walked like a few hundred feet down the beach and boom, like 50 sea lions. It was amazing. We must have, must have sat there for like, half hour 45 minutes just watching them they're amazing and the other thing we did there oh I have finally experienced an In-N-Out burger my daughter kept telling me she's like mom you gotta go to this In-N-Out burger place she goes you know all the people on the west coast talk about like how amazing it is so there fortunately there was one like within walking distance of our hotel because I don't think there's tons of them around like a McDonald's but there was one right near us. So we kept saying, okay, on the last night, you know, we're gonna go, before we leave, gotta get one of these burgers. This place was crazy, you guys. I have never seen anything like it. The first night we were there, I thought it was a fluke. Like I thought they were having some kind of promotion and giving stuff away. Literally, like here is the In-N-Out Burger, way in the back of a parking lot. And you had to, there were cars, then went up the side of the building and then around the back because that's where you actually pick up your order. So they were coming from the back, down the side, all the way down the parking lot. Then they turned this way and then turned this way to get out to the street. And then when you got to the street, they made a whole nother lane. There were seriously 40 to 45 cars probably in the drive through at any given time during the night when we were there. It was insane. I've never seen anything like it. So that last night, I got in this crazy drive through line to get a hamburger. And they had this poor lonely girl with an iPad out in the middle of the parking lot. He didn't even drive all the way up to the speaker. She's taking people's orders. So I order, and I'm getting ready for this, like, religious experience. It was a hamburger. <laughs> or a cheeseburger. It, it, was, it was good. I wouldn't say it was like, you know, life changing. So I was kind of a little let down by that, but what are you going to do? There was a place across the street called Freddy's Steak Burgers and Custard. We went there like two times. That was amazing. I love that place. That was like steak and shake. So I, I'm not going to be one of the in and out burger groupies, unfortunately, but Okay, I have talked now for almost 15 minutes, so I'm done. That has been my last three months. And I'm going to start with a rummage sale. This is one I went to last year. I remember telling you guys the guy out front was so obnoxious and rude to all of us, yelling and screaming. 
um, saying that, you know, if we didn't line up an order, he wasn't going to let us in. And, well, he must have taken his Xanax because he was much calmer this time around. Unfortunately, I found nothing in the boutique room. So, I think I spent, I think I spent like 15 bucks. Not even, I don't think. But, um, I did already make that back. So, everything's good. Um, let me show you what I got from there. I got, um, these two little things were in the Christmas section. These two little, whoops, that one's backwards. These two little figurines. I should put my glasses on so I can see if this thing is focusing or not. Wake up, camera. There we go. Um, I got them because they were signed. And you're not going to be able to see this on here because it's hard for me to see it without the camera. But it says Lori Whitlock, I think. They're both in okay condition. This one has like a little ding up here. And this one is missing one of the little firecracker things. And he might be missing a firecracker in this hand. I'm not sure. So I'm going to sell these together. Probably should get about 20 to 25 plus shipping for both of those in the condition they're in. I'm hoping. If they were perfect, I'd sell them each separately and they'd probably make 20 bucks a pop. Um, then I got this little chrome nutmeg grinder because, you know, doesn't everyone need a nutmeg grinder in their life? This is from Old Thompson. It even has nutmeg with it. I don't know how old it is. But the shelf life of nutmeg is like, you know, three, four years. So it's probably still good. But that was, let me see. I paid 50 cents a piece for those two little figurines I just showed you. The nutmeg thing I paid a buck for. I think I have that up for 15 to 20. With free shipping, I'm not sure. Um... I gotta figure out what to do with shipping. I think I'm I'm gonna stop doing as much free shipping, um, at least on priority stuff, because you know the the rates with the postal service, it's it's just killing me. I'm sure it's killing all of you too, but I'm just so tired of them raising the rates every single year. It's just gonna be impossible in a few years for us to even ship anything. Um, I got some mugs there. They were all 25 cents a piece. I got two of these guys, these love mugs. I bought them because, and it's, can't really see it well on this one. There's a stamp in the clay right here, and it's not wanting to focus. But anyway, and there's one here too. It says Keith Brimer Jones. He's an English potter. This is from his word range line. Um, I put the two love mugs up together, I think for 20 plus shipping or 15 plus shipping. So we'll see what happens with those. It might take a while for those to sell. And then these are his latte mugs. I actually got three of these. Um, this one I have up by itself because the word coffee is printed in black. The other two are printed in blue. So I put those up together, I think for 20 or 22 plus shipping and this one is like 17 or 18 with free shipping I think I don't know you guys if you're really that interested you can go and look at my store um, which I always have by the way linked down below in the description box then the other mugs I found there um, I found four of these green enamel mugs the reason I bought these was because on the bottom it says Victorian Richard Mackenzie Childs. Mackenzie Childs stuff is really popular. Um, she does a whole range of, of things, but her enamel wear is very popular, especially her line called Courtly Check, which is basically just black and white checkerboard pattern. It's very simple, but people go berserko over it. So if you find any of that, buy it. Um, these, I think, were earlier pieces, so I have four of these, which cost me a whopping dollar total. And then I also have, this is the sugar bowl, because it doesn't have a handle. This has never been used. I think I put 20 plus shipping 
on the mugs, I'm selling them in, you know, two lots of two. And then the sugar bowl, I think I have up there for 20 and free shipping. Something like that. Um, I did get one calculator for, I think, 50 cents or a dollar. It's a Texas Instruments, and it's... I can't take this off right now because I don't have a coin in my pocket, but it's got a weird rechargeable battery in it. And I don't have the plug to recharge it, so I'm not really sure if it works, but it has the case, it has the manuals, everything's there. Probably just going to pop this up there for like 20 with free shipping and see if I get any bites. So, see if anybody's going to take a shot on that. Uh, the other thing I got in their Christmas section was this guy. This is a Pottery Barn kind of faux mercury glass figurine. He's filled with water. I think the batteries are still in him. Yeah. It's hard to see, but, well, you can see the glitter moving around in there, I, th I hope. But anyway, it lights up and glitters. It looks like there's a little bit of wear on his face, but, I mean, the mercury glass is supposed to look distressed anyway, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. So, hopefully 15 to 20 plus shipping on him. Whoops. As I almost kill myself tripping over the tripod. Um... This little tray was like 25 cents. I just bought it because it's weird. <laughs> you know me, I like weird. So, it's just, he's just got this little face on him. It says Chile on the back. So that's where it was made. I haven't listed him yet. Maybe 10 plus shipping or 10 with free shipping. Who knows? Um, Let's see, what else? I got this little candle. The scent is C. Come on, camera. There we go. This is from the Ergo Spa Collection. You can see it. It's hard to see it down there. You can see it easier here, except this box is like holographic. Um, I think I paid a buck for that. And that, yeah, I paid a buck for that. Should be able to get 10 plus shipping on that, I'm hoping. I also had, um, I had a little, little like two ounce bottle. It was a red bottle with a gold cap. Uh, Ralph Lauren, uh, the scent is called just Lauren. And it was about 60% full. I paid 25 cents for it. I sold that for $20 with free shipping. So that's already gone. And I got this really pretty Christmas pillow. This was $3. But this is from CNF Enterprises. The tag was ripped off, but I did some research and found out who made it. But it's got this really pretty needlepoint panel. It's got all this gold metallic thread and beading. And then this pretty um, plaid pattern with the gold brick rack and the tassels and all this stuff. So that was 3 bucks. I have it up for 30 right now. I can't remember if it's free shipping or not. Uh, let me stop this. Okay. My uh, memory was about to wear out, like it, or run out like it always does at 23 minutes. Um, so I have that up for 30. I have uh, one or two watchers on it now. That might not go till closer to Christmas, but at least it's up. Then, the last thing I got from that sale was this cookie jar, which I walked past about a million times. But I finally bought it because on the bottom it says uh, Jenny Bowers 2014 for Crate and Barrel. And found out she did a whole line of stuff for them. These cookie jars are pretty rare. So this is their log, log cabin cookie jar. I paid, I think, four bucks for this. And right now I've got it up for 50 plus shipping on eBay. So, like I said, that might not go till closer to Christmas either. But I should be able to sell that. And then the last thing I bought from there. 
or my paper's all full of glitter, were these which are leaving today, actually four of these weird little dessert bowls. These are from, let's see, it says ancient Mimbreno Indian uh, Buffalo China. Anyway, it was a replica from the Santa Fe dining car service. Um, I looked at these and I kept looking at these. I kept walking past them a couple times. I thought they were weird and I just put them in my bag. I think I paid two bucks for all four. Yes. And just sold them yesterday for 35 plus shipping. And of course, where are they going? California. Of course they are. But I put enough on the shipping to cover that, so we're okay. Um, that was it for that sale. Then I went to the mall with my daughter and her friends. And I ended up, instead of going back home and driving all the way back out there, I just ended up walking around by myself for a while. I ended up in Macy's and found a bunch of these Molly Hatch Christmas plates, which were like dirt cheap. What did I pay for these? I think I paid $13 a set, and there's six in each set, and I got two, two complete sets. They had a lot of them, but I can only find two complete sets of them. These are like little canapé or appetizer plates. There's ice skates, reindeer, Christmas tree, candy cane, stockings, and a gingerbread man. And the reason I bought these was because Molly Hatch stuff does really well. Um, they usually carry her stuff in anthropology. And for some reason, those canopy plates are one of the only things in that pattern that are not on replacements.com. And I don't understand why. But somebody else had a set of them and they sold them for 45 bucks plus shipping. So that's what I got mine up there for. So we'll see what happens. Again, probably... Might not happen until closer to Christmas, but we'll see. Then I was driving back from the dentist at the very beginning of this month, March 1st, and the universe decided to reward me <laughs> for my <laughs> horrible experience. Well, it wasn't a horrible experience. I just don't like going to the dentist. I love my dentist. He's a great guy. I just, you know, like I always said, I, I don't like his career choice. <laughs> but anyway... On the way back, there's a thrift store. I stopped there and I found this hideous little thing. Um, it's a canister in my absolute uh, least favorite colors of yellow and orange. And green too, but there's no green on this. But I also can't stand green. But the reason I bought it was because it says Happy, Ch Happy Chic by Jonathan Adler. Jonathan Adler's stuff can sell really well. This is their medium sized canister in their Lola pattern. And, um, which I guess Happy Chic had a bunch of different subsets in that pattern. So Lola was one of the subsets. Um, I paid eight for this, and I should be able to get, um, I believe 60 or 70 out of that. Then I went to, um, a rummage sale not far from where my husband works but they said they hadn't had a rummage sale in 10 years and they were finally gonna have one and I'm like oh great you know people have 10 years worth of stuff in their house maybe so and they donated it all to the church well it was a really weird one their boutique room was really overpriced and then they wanted you to go from room to room and pay but it was, I, it's hard to explain. It was really confusing. They were handing you receipts, but you couldn't pay in the room. You had to go to the cashier, but then the cashier didn't know, you know, what room your receipts were from and whether you'd paid already or not. It was strange. Um, but I ended up spending three, four, five, six, eight, nine, fourteen dollars there. Their stuff was a little overpriced for me, but. Uh, I got two mugs. I got another Boleslawick Polish mug. This is a big one. Um, and I did find out the pat this pattern is called Peacock. So I did learn something new about that. But this is uh, hand-painted Polish pottery. You should be able to get about 20 
Um, with free shipping or I don't remember. It's probably twenty with free shipping. I paid a buck for it. I paid two for this guy, which I was really excited about. A Michigan J Frog figural Looney Tunes mug. Warner Brothers store, 1997, 1995, sorry. Um, until I got home and I put him in my new light box that I had and I realized he had a big chip in his hat. I'm like, dang it. So uh, I have him up for 20 in free shipping. I paid two bucks for him. I'm hoping he'll still go. If he was perfect, he would have probably been gone by now. But we'll just have to wait and see. Then from that same sale for another two bucks, I think. Oh no, three bucks. I got this bottle of Walk on Air uh, perfume from Kate Spade. One point, or just one ounce, sorry, not 1.7. One ounce. Should be able to get, I think it's 30 with free shipping. If it doesn't go soon, I might drop it down to 25. And then the last couple things I got from there was this set of retouching colors. It's for hand tinting like black and white photos. And it's in brand spanking new condition. There's 14 colors. If you want to buy one of these um, out of photography, you know, on a regular photography website, I think they're like 50 bucks or more. And that might only be for half the colors. I'm not sure. So I put mine up for I think 40 plus shipping. I do have a watcher, but no bites yet. That one might be a little bit of a harder sell. Uh, and then I got these because I love elves and I just love these. These are the Naughty Elf plates from Restoration Hardware. You can see down there. Come on. There we go. Six different plates. Um. This guy's on a big wheel and he's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. These guys are boxing. This guy is just completely wasted. <laughs> this guy's got a slingshot. This guy's smoking a cigar. And this guy's just down in a whole bottle of wine. So, they're having a great time. Um, got these for three bucks. I think I can sell these for, I think I have them up for like 30 or 35 plus shipping, something like that. Uh, again, might not sell till closer to the holidays. That was it from that sale. And then I actually went to a rummage sale with my husband. <laughs> um, there was one down the street, which is crazy rare because for some reason our town never has a rummage sale. I don't know why, but it's like the only town in the area that never has a rummage sale. But for some reason or another, this church advertised on uh, our local Facebook page that they were having a rummage sale. So we went there, and it was funny. At first, I was finding nothing. I was just so upset. And then I finally started to find a few things. And uh, I was starting to think my husband was, you know, my bad luck charm. Because the other time he went with me, I didn't find much at all. I'm like, oh man, but I did okay. Um, I bought, a, I don't have it here to show you because I sold it and I shipped it, but it's really easy to find online. Um, it's a Smokey and the Bandit cowboy hat from Stetson. They made these hats for uh, Universal, which made the movie, and it was in really good condition. I paid eight bucks for it, but I sold it for 45. I told my husband he was my good luck charm with that because I wouldn't have found that without him because he loves Smokey and the Bandit. So I keep telling myself that was the reason that that was there. Then I found this little travel set from the body shop. It's Moringa, whatever that is. Shower gel, hand cream, and body butter. Paid, I think, a buck for that. Should be able to get 20 out of it with free shipping. And then I got this board game. Well, it's not actually a board game, but it's called Code 777. It's kind of like a strategy logic game. This is their 25th anniversary edition. Paid a buck for that. I actually have that up for 30. I can't remember if it's free shipping or not. But it's a pretty good profit 
on this game. So if you find these code 777 games and you can get them cheap, buy them because um, they sell really well. I think I already have one or two watchers on, on that. And then for 50 cents, I think, I bought this cup and saucer from 222 Fifth. It's called, um, what's it called? Grimstad. G-R-I-M-S-T-A-D. This thing doesn't want to focus. There we go. With this Nordic pattern on it. So I have this up, I think, for 20 and free shipping. And if it doesn't sell, my daughter will happily take it because of her weird addiction to mugs and teacups and all that stuff. So that's it from that one. I have one more tiny little haul to show you, and then I swear this video is done. Um, it was two weeks ago now. Went to another rummage sale at a Catholic school about 15 minutes away. Um, never been to this one before. It said it wasn't going to open until 9, and for some reason they opened the doors early, and by the time I got there, there were already people walking around buying stuff. So I don't know how much good stuff I missed. I was a little ticked about that. But I guess they had something else going on at the school, so the sisters said, Yeah, go ahead, open up the garage sale. So... For a buck a piece, I got two of these big honking Looney Tunes mugs. They fit like 32 ounces a piece. They're huge. Um, these are from the Warner Brothers Studio Store. These are from 1997. Yeah. So I got Pepe Le Pew and his girlfriend, Penelope Pussycat, I think her name is. And then Bugs and Daffy. Um, decaf is for the birds. So those were a buck a piece. I think I have those up for $22.99 with free shipping because they're bigger and they're going to cost a little bit more to ship. I had some crazy woman from California, of course, say to me, oh, can you take 15 and ship it any way you want it? I'm like, no, because these weigh over two pounds with the box. So to ship it to California, my cost is like over $14. And she wants me to ship it to her for $15. i am like, eh, and no. <laughs> so she's like, oh, well then how low can you go? I go, $22.99, the price that it's at. And she's like, oh, you won't give me a break? I'm like, no. So needless to say, she did not buy the Pepe Le Pew mug that she wanted. Too bad. Um, so then I got this. For 50 cents, I got this little wooden tiki lighter, just because. Um, he just has Hawaii etched on his foot down here somewhere, right here. There it is. But, you know, no manufacturer's name or anything. Might make 10 bucks on him. Then I got this really pretty German candle arch. And this is from... Hold on, guys, I gotta look. I don't have his name. It's Robert something. It's Robert, I think it's Robert, or Richard. Robert or Richard Glasser. It's like G L A E S S E R. Um, there's an R G on the bottom right here. So, um, handmade in Germany. I think I have it up for 30 with free shipping, something like that. Um, should have no problem making that on it. You know, it might be closer to Christmas again, but those are one of the better manufacturers of German candle arches, you know, if you guys needed to know that information. Uh, obviously, I would have liked one that held more candles or was bigger, but that's what they had, and I paid a whopping dollar for it, or no, two bucks for it. So I'm happy with that. And my best purchase from there was this guy. This is a cold cast porcelain pencil style Santa, because he's very tall and skinny, from Lennox. They did a whole bunch of these uh, for like six or seven years in a row. This is Julesven. He's the Nordic Santa from 2006. Um, I have another one of these, a Nutcracker Santa. He's only worth like 30 or 40 but this guy, I paid two bucks for him. And he's worth like, I think I have him up for like 75 bucks. And I shouldn't have a problem getting that even without the box. So very happy I found that. Um, didn't find much else even though the place was huge and filled with stuff. So 
Kind of wishing I got there earlier, but what are you going to do? So, all the sales are starting in the next few weeks. There should be a flea market this weekend, which I'm thinking is more like a rummage sale. That They're advertising it more as the rummage sale. Um, out of high school, I've never been to, so see what happens with that. And I know there's another one coming up on April 13th, I think. So, I'm starting to get excited, hoping sales pick up, because if not, I'll be living in a cardboard box. <laughs> I won't, but, you know, feels that way sometimes. Plus, you just get down on yourself and go, God, I'm so stupid. Why do we even sell on eBay? Can't buy anything that people want. And, you know, you start wallowing, which I do a lot. Even though I've been doing this like, almost 11 years, I still wallow from time to time and think I'm a moron. Um, and, oh, the other thing I bought was I bought two big boxes of cross-stitch stuff, which I don't have to show you, but some guy was advertising it on Facebook. I went over there. I picked both boxes up, cost me 15 bucks, sorted it out, a bunch of them went, uh, I'm going to put them in a lot, the other ones I put up separately, already made my money back plus like 20, 30 bucks, um, and there was also a whole boatload of cross stitch fabric that was new in the package, I can split those up into two lots and probably sell them for at least 50 bucks a lot, so not a bad return on 15 bucks. So that's it everyone. Sorry this is so long. I hope all you guys are having a great 2019 and I wish all of you the best um, picking season. I hope you guys find great stuff and hope I find great stuff too <laughs> so that I can share it with you guys. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.